the guy that the New York Knicks need is LaMelo Ball. LaMelo Ball, the potential number one pick in a franchise changing talent as a highly creative six foot seven lead guard with remarkable instincts, vision, and imagination as a playmaker. Now, although he's been on the social media scene since he was a young teen, gone viral for his half court pull ups and his cherry picking ways, NBA scouts didn't really take him seriously as an elite prospect, even as recently as two years ago. Because he left high school to go play in the professional ranks out in Lithuania, mostly growing his family brand, the majority of scouts hadn't even seen him play in a competitive game at that point. Now, his situation in Vitautas, Lithuania always seemed more geared toward reality show content than basketball development, and Ball stood around 6'5 with a scrawny frame at the time. He'd still wow you with his slick handle, passing ability, and natural touch, but with his affinity for gambling on defense and chucking deep threes, we often wondered if he would ever land in a serious enough situation to actually make the best of his talents. Finally leaving the circus in Lithuania for Spire Institute in Ohio, Ball started to come into his own, playing for basketball journeyman and now manager Jermaine Jackson. He sprouted closer to 6'7", started to fill out his frame, and caught our eye with his ambidexterity and creativity with the basketball. Lamelo then opted to sign with the Illawarra Hawks of the Australian NBL, giving him the ability to, for the first time in his young career, focus strictly on basketball, away from the spotlight out in Wollongong, Australia. Although this season was cut short due to a foot injury, Ball took the league by storm, averaging 21.8 points, 9.6 rebounds, and 8.8 .8 assists per 40 minutes. Although the team really struggled, Ball almost finished the season with back-to-back triple-doubles, going for 32-11-13, followed by a 25-12-9 line to end his Illawarra career. Now there's certainly no shortage of question marks surrounding Ball as he enters the NBA ranks, but keep in mind, only two players in NBA history have averaged over 10 assists per game at 6'6 or taller, LeBron James and Magic Johnson. Ball also has a chance to eventually join that elite group if he lands in the right situation with shooting and space at his disposal. LaMelo's closest physical comparison? His older brother Lonzo, naturally. Now, Lonzo has a little bit more open court speed with more quick, sudden bursts in his game. Maybe even has a little bit more pop as a leaper than LaMelo. But LaMelo, at least an inch or two taller than Lonzo, has a little bit more room to grow out his frame at the same stage, and a lot smoother with the ball in his hands. Athletically, much more wiggle with the ball, much shiftier, which gives him more upside as a shot creator long term. Now from a sheer physical standpoint, LaMelo also has some similarities to Nets guard Karis LeVert. In terms of his style of play and offensive game, some compare LaMelo to like a six foot seven Trey Young, with his ability to make every pick and roll pass with either hand, handle the ball at a high level, finish with finesse in the paint, and knock down deep triples, even if Ball is nowhere near on Young's level quite yet as a shooter. Ball has elite size for a point guard at six foot seven plus, and he utilizes that size on both ends of the floor in a variety of ways. Now, although he's not the most physical driver naturally, as his body continues to fill out, he'll be able to shed smaller defenders on his way to the rim like he does here with RJ Hampton. He may not be the most explosive run and jump athlete, but at six foot seven, he's able to get to offensive rebounds most point guards can't, here crashing from the corner and uncorking the one-handed tip dunk. Ball's length also shows in the open court. He changes ends fluidly, then has the strides to big step his way to the rim before sneaking in the two-handed slam. LaMelo is arguably the draft's best ball handler, with the ability to change speeds and directions at will, which is something his brother Lonzo really struggled with, both at UCLA and now in the NBA. Ball uses these basic left-hand hang dribble moves to lull slower defenders to sleep before exploding to the rim. He then has counter moves off of that, spinning back to his right hand if the left hand drive is taken away. Ball's handle is also extremely instinctual. His ball on a string handle makes him a threat in pick and roll as well. Here splitting the screen with incredible precision, going between his legs before tossing the ball out in front of him with his off hand to squeak through the tight crevice. Ball's creativity with the ball is on full display here as he dodges the hedging defender with his right hand wrap dribble and then goes right back to the same motion this time with a behind-the-back dime to the Roman. He has incredible command of the ball and the natural instincts to read defenders on the fly and react accordingly. 
Dating back to his run and gun Chino Hills high school days, LaMelo has always been an outstanding outlet passer. One hand, two hand, simply doesn't matter. He's always done a tremendous job of hitting the big in stride and rewarding them for running the floor hard. Right after snatching the defensive rebound, he looks up to scan the floor and identify the advantage, making early eye contact with Aaron Brooks. As LaMelo then makes his way up court, he again glances over at Brooks to check in on his progress, letting him know to sprint the lane hard and he'll reward him. Ball then maneuvers his way back to the middle of the floor, garnering the attention of the retreating big man while also creating an angle for himself to deliver the pass. Of course, with all of Ball's brilliance, naturally comes some miscues, which is why it's extremely important he lands with a head coach that's going to challenge him on one hand, yet also give him enough rope to make mistakes and to take risks. LaMelo's shot selection has been a point of contention since he was a young teen, firing up near half-court shots with little consequence. While he's reined it in a little bit, he still likes these quick strike threes, not always showing the best understanding of time and score. Now, as you can see here, Illawarra is up 14 in basically a two on four situation with 20 seconds on the shot clock, yet Ball still jacks up a 25 foot pull up. It's one thing if he was as accurate as a Trey Young or a Damian Lillard, but Ball finished the season at 24.7% from three with undisciplined mechanics, even if he has excellent natural touch. Although a great passer, too often Ball will fire up a quick, contested triple without getting his team into its offense. For him to justify taking these type of shots, he'll have to develop into at least a league average shooter, which he's shown the potential to become if he can stay more disciplined with his mechanics. Ball finished the season with a 46% true shooting percentage, largely because his inconsistency from three, combined with his struggles creating high percentage offense when teams go under screens and pack the paint. Now for LaMelo to maximize his long-term potential as a half-court scorer, he's gonna have to make teams pay for going under ball screens and force guards over the top, which would then allow him to use his size, IQ, and finesse to manipulate defenses both as a scorer and as a facilitator. Now, as you can see here, when Ball isn't a threat against switches or unders, his effectiveness as a half-court scorer diminishes, as he's not overly physical, nor is he a high-level athlete. But there's no doubting Ball's range and touch when he does get hot. Even with his spotty percentages, LaMelo knocked down over two triples per game with Illawarra. If he is able to keep defenses honest and force them to play out of these drop coverages, Ball then has the ability to hop into mid-range jumpers or punish deep drops with his patented long-range floaters. With that said, LaMelo does play into the hands of the defense a bit too often, settling for an off-balance floater from the elbow as opposed to attacking the retreating big or getting the guard defender on his back and taking advantage of the two-on-one. When Ball does decide to come off with good pace, he's able to use his size and deception to get an angle to the rim, even if he's not always able to finish against length. Although he'll still have to prove himself against NBA caliber rim protectors, Ball's combination of touch and ambidexterity give him considerable upside as a finisher. He does a great job with his setups too, forcing his man into the screen before dropping in the two foot floater. So long as Ball is able to force teams into drop coverages, he has the size and savvy to pick teams apart as both a scorer and a playmaker. LaMelo's passing brilliance doesn't just come in the open court. He's excellent in pick and roll, showing the ability to both hit the roll man in stride and find open shooters without needing to get a piece of the paint. Now, Ball is very accurate with his pocket passes, and he can deliver the ball from all different angles. No looks, behind the backs, hook passes, you name it, LaMelo probably has it in his bag. On top of that, he's an excellent live dribble passer with his right hand and his left hand, which is something you'll see from some of the league's top facilitators. Now, as you can see on this play here, LaMelo does a great job of handling backcourt pressure. Flipping the left-handed pass to the pressure release and then coming off the high ball screen hard and aggressively to sell the right-handed drive and finish. But Ball then sees that the weak side tag is late and lofts the one-handed lob right to the front of the rim for an easy finish. Now when teams try to blitz or hard hedge ball, he's then able to create passing lanes with ball fakes. Here moving number zero by showing the ball before firing a no-look dart between the arms of number 12, right on the money to the roll man. Just incredible accuracy and vision from the 18-year-old. Of course, there are times when he simply lets the defense off the hook by settling for contested jumpers, as opposed to really getting into the body of his man and manipulating the defense. 
As you can see here, Ball misses the wide open corner shooter, with the opponent committing close to four defenders in the paint. But Ball does show tremendous promise hitting weak side shooters when he gets downhill to his right hand, here seeing the tag man starting to pull off the wing shooter to help on the roller and whipping a one-handed hook pass right on the money for a good look at a three. Now those are all nice and fine and impressive passes that you'll see from a lot of guys, right? But it's really this read here that shows Lamelo's pick and roll playmaking potential the most. With the big and a deep drop around the elbow, Ball comes downhill with a head of steam, unleashing a cross jab move that you'll see from a lot of the NBA's top guards. But as he's making that move, in one motion, Ball sees the corner shooter's defender pulled all the way over to the charge circle, meaning that corner shooter has some daylight. Now this isn't by design, okay? This is Ball just reading and reacting, playing strictly off of instincts. Like a freestyle rapper in a battle rap, he's just flowing. While he's excellent at dissecting drop coverages, where Ball has a little bit of a steeper learning curve is against switches. Now the NBL isn't exactly known for having long, rangy, athletic bigs who really step out on the perimeter and lock up guards. You just don't see it as often as you would in, say, the NBA. But LaMelo still had his issues breaking down bigs on switches, struggled to create high percentage offense in the half court in those situations. As you can see here, he loves to play with the ball on the perimeter, over dribbles, and doesn't really have many ways to separate into pull-ups once he's inside the arc or for that matter, doesn't really have many ways to barrel his way to the rim and finish either. When he's not able to get the big to bite on his hang dribble moves, Ball loses steam fairly quickly and has to resort to these desperation attempts just to keep the play alive. As you can see here, he does have the footwork to step back into these deep pull-up threes. While it's a tough way to live with much consistency, that type of shot making potential is certainly a useful building block for Lamella. But when that shot's not falling, Ball tends to get himself in trouble. Far too often, he'll over dribble with this through the legs move, attempting to rock his man to sleep only to get ripped. Aside from his defense, maybe the biggest question mark surrounding LaMelo Ball is just how he'll be able to fit alongside other ball dominant high usage guards. Now Ball's best chance at stardom is surrounding him with athletes, shooters, and defenders. But it really hamstrings a front office and a coaching staff to have to build your team completely around him. The best players in today's game are able to play on the ball, play off the ball, and don't completely need it in their hands at all times. This is where LaMelo really needs to improve. As you can see on this possession, he's not always engaged when the ball isn't in his hands, walking around with his hands down rather than spacing to the corner and giving a target. Of course, he recovers with the highlight play, but too often, ball is simply in chill mode, standing at least five feet behind the three-point line and dribbling into a crossover pull-up rather than stepping into a catch-and-shoot three. Even when he is ready to catch and shoot, he doesn't always finish his shot, leading to a wide variety of misses. Now, you can see the stark difference in the results when he does hop into his three on balance, holding his follow through and staying in his shot until it splashes through the net. Ball also has potential in dribble handoff situations when he's on balance and disciplined with his mechanics. If Lamelo can buy into playing off the ball some, he has the ability to really be a factor as he's an excellent cutter for a point guard. His instincts and natural feel shine bright here as he back cuts when overplayed, then backhands the bounce pass right on the money to the open shooter. As long as his jump shot can come around, LaMelo Ball has the size, IQ, touch, instincts, vision, creativity to be one of the best offensive point guards in the NBA. That's not much of a question mark. On the other end of the floor, there are quite a few questions to answer. Now, that's not due to sheer ability. LaMelo has great size at six foot seven. He has excellent anticipation, great instincts. He's already an elite positional rebounder, one of the best rebounders in the entire NBL this past season, but he has so many bad habits, so many years of bad habits to wash away, whether it's on the ball, really simply not caring, losing focus off the ball, all those years of cherry picking came to haunt him at times this season with the Illawarra Hawks in the NBL. And there are too many times when he just simply didn't show that he's willing to sit down in a stance and get a stop when it matters most. Now, too often he's extremely upright in his stance, allowing guards far less athletic than him to get right to the front of the rim. Opponents catch him flat-footed and relaxed on the perimeter, blowing past him with the most basic right-to-left crossovers. Ball regularly gives up just after one slide. He doesn't do himself any favors with his off-ball positioning, but you'd like to see a little bit more urgency to try and keep his man in front and get a stop. 
On top of his sheer lack of effort, Ball is also going to have an adjustment to the quickness of NBA guards and the physicality of NBA wings. A big advantage to having a 6-7 point guard is that he can play bigger on defense, defending twos and threes, giving the coaching staff greater lineup flexibility. But Ball figures to struggle both with the speed of point guards and the physicality of wings, at least early on in his career. But when Ball does actually decide to sit down and defend, he has the positional length to gap opposing guards, giving himself enough space to contain the drive and rely on his tools to contest. If Ball can buy into battling on switches like you see here, he has a chance to be a real asset given his size and defensive IQ. Where Ball struggles most defensively is in pick and roll. While he doesn't always get the best direction from his big, too often he's just relaxed in his stance, not ready to dip under the screen or fight over the top. Even when he does duck under in time, he still gives up straight line drive after straight line drive, offering almost zero resistance and taking little pride in getting a stop. Ball also gets caught flat-footed when opponents reject screens or DHOs, either swiping at the ball or just standing and watching. Away from the action is where LaMelo likes to take his most time off. That's when he likes to relax and chill. He's a proverbial ball watcher. It's too bad because he has great instincts and anticipation when he's locked in, but far too often he'll just lose sight of his man and give up a wide open look. Even when LaMelo is in position to make a play on the ball, he'll simply swipe at it rather than going up vertically at the rim, even during a competitive road game in the final minute. He loves to gamble for steals also, putting his defense behind him in a bind. But much like Lonzo, LaMelo actually has excellent instincts when he decides to make a play. He has the size and reaction time to rotate out of the corner for blocks at the rim. His anticipation also helps him make plays in the passing lanes, which led to 2.1 steals per 40 minutes during his NBL career. Where Ball's basketball smarts show up most is on the glass. He has an uncanny ability to read the ball off the rim, beat opponents to long rebounds, and then generate offense in the other direction. LaMelo Ball has been labeled so many different things since he was thrust into the spotlight as a preteen. A basketball Kardashian, some people will say. A basketball vagabond, a social media star, a polarizing prospect. But after tracking his progress, Closely over the last few years, I'm confident in saying that LaMelo Ball has more star power than any prospect in the 2020 draft class. A six foot seven point guard who doesn't feel an ounce of pressure, welcomes the spotlight, and has the game to back it up. Not an easy combination to find. Now, with that said, anyone who tells you they know exactly how LaMelo Ball's career is gonna turn out would be lying through their teeth. Okay, we've never seen a prospect with this trajectory and he's gonna need a very special set of circumstances to really thrive and maximize his long-term potential. But I will tell you this, if I had one decision to make, one pick to make at the top of this draft and I was betting on one guy to potentially become a superstar, it's LaMelo Ball. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.